Hey guys, it's Lost and Taj, and we're making another video. So, um, you guys asked us a lot of questions, and we're gonna start with a nursing video. Like, what is it like out here being a nurse out here? Okay, in so the Riyadh. first question we have um, is, what hospital do you work at? So the name of the hospital is King Faisal Hospital and Research Center. I don't think that's right, Lost. That's right. So we were a little bit wrong. It is King Faisal Specialist Hospital and Research. Another question we keep getting is, um, uh, what kind of nursing do you do? Um, the unit I work on is called F1, which is a med surge unit, kind of long-term care. And that's what I did back home. I did a med surge acute care, some um, pulmonary stuff, palliative care, and also some ortho. But what I'm focusing on here is um, long-term acute care. And I work on labor and delivery. Well, actually, it's a little bit different here than it is um, back in the States. I work on a unit called A1, which is basically antepartum. It also has a mix of postpartum and then um, labor and delivery is connected. So we kind of do a full circle. You have mother and baby couple of care and you also have active laborers and people that you're treating for preterm issues. All you other nurses are wondering, what is the charting system like in a... Uh, I mean, it's not that bad. Tell about it. It's uh, all computer charting. Well, I'm not going to say all. Mostly computer charting. Mostly. <laughs> um, if you guys ever work with Epic, it's similar to Epic, but it's not Epic. It's, it's called Epic. Um, ISIS. And that sounds kind of crazy, but it's called ISIS. Yes. <laughs> and part of it, well, pretty much everything's on the chart, but there are you have to check some handwritten doctor's orders. And they also use um, Cardexes a lot. I'm not really familiar with using a whole bunch of paper charting, but they use... It's back and forth. So go ahead and get your mind right to switch back and forth. Now, when you're on your own, use your computer, but if you, you still have to write paper for them too. So everybody so asks, like, what do you have to wear the work, wear to work? You see, I have on my abaya. So when I'm out in public, I have to wear my abaya. But on the nursing unit, we actually have hospital issued uniforms. And guess what? They're, They're all white. white. It's like nursing school all over again. Who wants to wear that? <laughs> We have no choice. <laughs> but the good thing about it is, hey, we didn't have to buy any uniforms. Yeah. And if it gets messy, they'll just, oh, they have a tailor. They have a tailor and they iron all your um, uniforms for you. They'll put them on a the little hanger for you. And you just wash them and everything. And you don't pay for that. It's just, hey, it's just come there. get it. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> so I'm yeah. still trying to fit in here. We've been here about a month. So we wait a little bit to take to make the video so we could have some real, you know, experience behind what we're saying. And I will say, this is much different. <laughs> that was a good one. It's, it's much different. different. Um, on our unit, I mean, you know, the one thing that I do love about it, we are adequately staffed. The nurse patient ratio in my unit is three to one. That's unheard of. In that the would never happen. Especially for a QK three to one. I'm like, what? Okay. But drawback, they don't really have CNAs or ticks. So the nurses are expected to do everything you're giving bad baths you're helping them off the bedpan you don't not saying you don't do that in the states but you have people who are designated, designated. to help you with that no you're doing it this is you this is your is you patient sure it's not just your unit though because some people say they're they implementing have, it they have stuff well it, cnas and care techs are being implemented into this hospital it's a new thing here mm -hmm. so i mean our unit has i don't know 30 or 40 beds or something like that and they're one tech, maybe two sometimes, and you got a book with them like, hey, I need you to help me with that. It's not like you got somebody that's assigned to help you with your patient. So. Well, sorry for you because I don't have an issue. Um, labor delivery, even at home, is one-to-one -one or one-to-two, depending on the acuity of the patient. So I'm happy. I'm really happy. Uh, but I am struggling with this whole A1 thing because back home, I'm used to, hey, delivering, make sure your baby's fine, do a couple vitals, up, and then you go to postpartum. Mm -mm. It's not like that here. You're going to do the full round of care. So uh, I'm working on that. Another thing so that though. I kind of find a little mind-boggling <laughs> here yes. in the States, mm -hmm. um, it's long-term care. On my long -term care. So in the States, when you say long-term, you're like, oh, okay, somebody's there two months, three months. Here, no, five years. That's long-term. <laughs> I'm that's like, super long -term. somebody's been here for five years. But that's just kind of, that's what it is here. Um, I guess everything is more culturally based and it's oriented around the family and taking care of them. So sometimes you have to do things on their time, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. You should include your patient and your family in there. But in the States, you know, you make your schedule as a nurse of what you're going to do. You're going to come in in the morning. You're going to give the meds. You're going to do the bath. You're going to, you got things in order. And here the patient's like, oh, no, I'm not ready to do that. Nope, not yet. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And I'm like, um... Tell me what things to do. It's a lot of adjusting, and that's on both units. My patients, they will decide when they want to take stuff, and you just, okay, 
either you refuse or we'll just wait on you. This is so when we're talking about time management, I kind of have a little story that happened to me. So I had a patient and the doctor, the doctor ordered a stat echo. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm asking my preceptor. I'm like, okay, so, you know, are they coming to do it right now? Are they going to take the patient down? She's talking about, well, you know, it'll, they're going to do it. And I'm Inshallah. like, <laughs> I'm like, but it's that. Like, this should be happening right now. He ordered his stat. She, she, and then she was, I was like, do I need to call the people to let them know that, you know, the doctor wrote an order? She was talking about, they'll see it. I was like, I feel like I should call. Like, it's that. And then she was like, so I called the people. Mm-hmm. And the people were like, so what's your problem? I was like, well, this is a stat order. Like, when... When are you guys going to do this? And she's talking about, you know, is your patient in serious harm right now? I'm like, they're breathing. It's okay. All the signs are stable. But this is that order. What do you mean? He's talking about tomorrow. Tomorrow? tomorrow? <laughs> like, I'm not even going to say like like an hour or something. They have like, they got a good time frame in the set. Like, I think it's an hour or no. something. No. Tomorrow. Tomorrow it'll get done. I'm like, this is stat. Like, no, it wasn't stat. I was kind of nervous about that, but I guess that's how it is. <laughs> I don't do. really want to need nothing stat here. Cause girl, they gonna see you tomorrow. I'm, I might be dead by then. I'm glad your patient was still there. She was okay. Barely. <laughs> I don't know why they making stat stuff for tomorrow. No, I will say nice. one pretty good thing is that um, you have a preceptor for a good chunk of time. In the States, you don't get as long. Like, if you do a travel nursing concert, you may get two, three days. Here we have almost two full weeks, and you have somebody with you at all times. And they're going to show you, and they're super supportive. And they, they know that you don't know the language. They know that you're used to, you know, you don't know what you're doing here. I mean, they know you're a nurse, and you can do your job, but you don't know how things they're, work at this hospital. That's a reference. I will say that. Because I didn't expect to have as much support as I did coming in, having experience as a nurse already. I thought it was going to be like, hey, you got one or two days, get out there and do it. No. They're going to make sure you know. So if you mess up, hey, they trained you. <laughs> That's oh, your fault. So the last question, or the most important question I think is, everyone's asking, well, what is the hardest part for you there? And it's not even nursing. It's the language. Horrible. I, <laughs> I'm walk, horrible at it. I walk into the patient's room. I'm so ready. Hey, I'm Tosh. Mm-mm. And they just going on and on in Arabic. And I'm just looking like, hmm? um, <laughs> and that's when my preceptor comes in handy. So we have learned a few words, but still, like, I only am ready for generic responses. If you come at me with any more than yes, no, maybe so, it's too much. Right? <laughs> it's way too much. And I'm like, okay, pause. <laughs> yeah, it literally took me, I mean, 10 minutes to find out my patient wanted you know, some extra sugar. And I, was, and I only knew because they had some coffee next to them and they had to use my reasoning skills. In context, it, was only, it was only two packets there. I was like, she probably needs some more sugar. So I have one of the basic yeah. reading, so don't judge my Arabic. But um, I usually come in and I say, keep halik, um, Ana Tash, Mama Reno Elio. And I basically say, good morning. My name is Tash. I'll be your nurse today. And that's when they go in on the other stuff. But hey, <laughs> I'm getting there. And, and you know what? They actually really, really appreciate you trying. And if you go in with a smile... Then I work with you. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Nine times out of ten, they speak a little English. Yeah, so that helps. <laughs> and I'm so happy when I have a patient that speaks a lot of English. I'm like, oh, my God. Yes, let me help you. <laughs> I know. They, you feel like a nurse again. Right. And when they don't speak English, like, I'm using so much body language. I'm like, you, me, hurt, feel alarm. Like, oh, we don't feel feel alarm is any pain. Are you having pain? So we're in there playing charades like 90% of the day. <laughs> But yeah. um, you got to do what you got to do. And everyone is saying you're going to catch on. I mean, people who work with us, um, a lot of them are expats. So they didn't come in knowing Arabic. We have people from the Philippines, people from the Netherlands, people from um, New Zealand, um, Canada, everywhere. So most people don't speak Arabic, but they've learned it. And then they also have an accent from their native land. Half the people on my team are from South Africa. So imagine someone with a South African accent trying to speak English, but then trying to speak Arabic on top of that. So um, I'm still trying to figure it out. So we'll, we'll see. One day. One we'll day. We'll Six months in. Right. We'll see. We'll so anyway, we're going to go ahead and close our video, but this is mostly nursing related. That does not mean you have to ask us questions that are nursing related. We just figured, hey, we're here on a nursing trip. Let's go ahead and get this out the way. Um, but if you have any other questions, please comment, rate, subscribe, tell us something because we're here for you guys. We want you to be on the trip with us. Yeah. So thanks again, guys, for watching Lush and Tosh TV. Bye, Bye. guys.